While watching AMD's CES keynote and flipping through the press slide, I got really excited when this one showed up. If you don't understand what's so special about this specific slide, which shows AMD's new Phoenix APU lineup, take a closer look at the cache amount. With 40MB for the 8-core and 38MB for the 6-core APU, for the first time ever, AMD isn't reducing the L3 cache size on their mobile APUs. It's the same amount of cache a desktop-based Zen 4 CPU has. And if you watched my last video about the death of SRAM, you understand why that's a big story. I honestly couldn't believe my eyes and immediately started a video concept to explore the possible reasons for this major departure from AMD's previous design philosophy. By doing some further research on this topic, I came across another slide, also from AMD's CS press kit. And as you can clearly see, here AMD lists Phoenix with only 20 megabytes of combined cache. But 20 megabytes also doesn't make a lot of sense. A Zen 4 core has 1 MB of L2 cache, and with up to 8 cores, that's already 8 MB of L2 cache, which means either only 12 MB of L3 cache, or AMD is cutting the L2 cache size on Phoenix. Even though I had two slides directly from AMD, each claiming a vastly different amount of cache, both possibilities came with their own interesting design changes. Can you guess which one turned out to be true? Well, both are wrong. Phoenix has up to 24 MB of cache, 8 MB L2 and 60 MB L3. AMD fumbled two separate plus slides at the same time. It took half a day to figure out AMD was just releasing false information. Next up are AMD's new Navi 33 based mobile GPUs. A really interesting topic, especially with the ongoing discussions about possible hardware flaws in the larger Navi 31 chips and the RDNA 3 architecture itself. Clock speeds fell short of the rumored 3 GHz and above, so I was excited to see how Navi 33 would perform. AMD provided this slide and my heart jumped another beat. The tiny RX 7700S with a TDP range of only 75 to 100 watts is delivering 32 teraflops of FP32 performance. That's more than half of the 61.4 teraflops a 7900 XTX brings to the table. A huge achievement, and based on the amount of shader cores Navi 33 offers, the clock speed has to be well above 3 GHz. Heck, it's close to 4 GHz. A truly amazing win for AMD, clocking a mobile GPU so high, and a clear indication that something actually went wrong with Navi 31. This has so many implications for the rumored RDNA 3 refresh. Again, my head was full of ideas for a video, discussing the extremely high clock speeds Navi 33 must run at in order to deliver 32 teraflops of performance. But as you can guess, it was just another error in AMD's slide deck. 32 and 28 are not the amount of teraflops, but the number of compute units. I could continue like that, the whole presentation was full of errors and mistakes, like a Ryzen 7 7950X 3D instead of Ryzen 9, or a 1280-bit memory interface on the RX 7600M. Hardware Unbox and others who AMD provided with the CES press deck before the actual keynote talked about how AMD changed some of the slides last minute, right before the presentation started. Now, none of these mistakes are a big problem. No consumer bought a Phoenix APU thinking it had 40 MB of cache, or a Navi 33 GPU due to the claimed 32 teraflops of performance. People noticed and AMD provided a new set of press slides with the mistakes fixed, but still it left me with a bitter taste in my mouth. Not because of the obvious spelling errors like calling a 7950X3D a Ryzen 7, but because AMD got core specs of the APUs and GPUs wrong. Cache and FP32 performance matters. Aside from Computex, CES is the largest and most important electronics show of the year. And AMD had a really nice lineup. Zen 4 X3D is finally announced, Phoenix is super interesting even with only 24 MB of cache, and the Navi 33 based mobile GPUs perform well even at lower clock speeds. The quality of this year's CES presentation just wasn't up to AMD standard. Dear Dr. Lisa Su, please just hire someone to sanity check all of the important press slides before releasing them. That's all I'm asking for. Don't get my hopes up, only to crush them later due to the inability to fact check your own information. AMD's amazing products deserve the full attention, don't take it away with low quality information. I'm always disappointed when I let an error slip into my own videos. Of course, this little rant won't replace my CES analysis. I'm already hard at work on videos on the asymmetrical design of Zen 4 XUD, a closer look at Phoenix and Dragon Range, and hopefully much more. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, you know what to do if you did, and see you in the next one.